my name is Dennis Wedlick. Uh, I am founding principal of Barless Wedlick Architects. Uh, we have offices in Hudson, New York and uh, in New York City. Uh, what we're going to be talking today, though, focuses on our work with Columbia County Habitat for Humanity and their ability to build uh, affordable housing for the families in this area. This area lies just north of New York City, about an hour and a half to two hours drive. Uh, as you can see, it's quite rural, um, but um, it is also uh, quite poor in the sense that many people live here uh, are suffering from housing poverty. That's because the price of land is so expensive. Uh, it translates to the uh, cost of housing is quite high. Families here can spend um, easily 50%, 60% of their income, monthly income on housing. And the definition of housing poverty is if your family is spending more than one third of their monthly income on housing. Housing uh, poverty thwarts a community's resilience against economic downturns, natural disasters, and pandemics as we're all facing now. The cost of living in Columbia County is extremely high. Uh, we have our workforce families uh, often are spending more than 50% of their income on housing and then housing in that regard uh, is um, taxes, insurance, monthly maintenance, utilities, all of those things add up to um, the housing costs. We have good jobs here in Columbia County. Our, our rural workforce uh, has jobs in agriculture, construction, education, healthcare, hospitality, and the retail sector. But good jobs uh, don't help when we get hit with one very severe winter with the high utility bill. Uh, when that happens, uh, and it happens, uh, that families get forced out of their homes and they will be moving from here to other areas that are um, have less severe climate and more stable utility bills. It may seem like there are affordable housing options around here, um, but even a mobile home rental is uh, not going to lift someone out of housing poverty because their income will end up um, still even at a very, very low monthly rent uh, for the mobile home being more than 50%, uh, 50%, 60% of their income. The goal for Habitat Humanity is to provide them with not just housing, but a home that they can own and a home that they can own that would uh, lift them out of housing poverty. So they, their goal is, and they set their prices accordingly so that they can sell new homes to families uh, for less than one third of a monthly expense um, than their uh, monthly income. And this shows you how they determine the monthly payments that they have their families spend uh, on their homes. And then that works out to be a third. The problem is that that assumes that a stable utility bill, and uh, that is not the case around here. We can be hit with a very hard winter and suddenly their calculations uh, fall apart. So Habitat for Humanity uh, was asking us if we could take our experience with Passive House where we demonstrate that we can not only stabilize energy uh, costs but actually reduce energy costs to hardly anything per month. And if they could take that technology and apply it to the homes that, that they built. And they felt if they could do that, um, that would be the piece that would make their habitat families more resilient. And that's why um, we call this the rural build because our intention is to use this technology uh, to make a more viable, more sustainable rural workforce in our rural community. So, how does Passive House make rural communities more resilient? This is the thing that we want to uh, talk about today. But before we go there, we need to back up a little. We need to back up to the very first structure built in the Hudson Valley to meet Passive House standards. And it's a project we designed that ultimately became known as the Hudson Passive Project. 
It was designed originally in 2007 and then redesigned in 2008 once we were more familiar with um, passive house techniques. This became a community effort because we applied to uh, receive a, a high performance uh, building grant from New York State Energy and uh, Research and Development Authority. And with that grant money, we could tap into the resources of our other consultants, such as the great um, resource of the Levy Partnership, Inc. in uh, building science team in New York City, terrific structural engineers, and, um, and then the best builders to help us. Why we were so intrigued about um, pursuing Passive House at the time, because we knew little about it at the time, was because Passive House being so driven by metrics and, and being able to provide such hard data about what the energy actually would be used um, once you completed the design. Prior to that, we were relying on now it seems like old fashioned techniques, passive solar techniques. And um, at the time we created this uh, case study uh, to achieve what we determined would be LEED Platinum certification. A simple small home, uh, maybe 1400 square feet, A-frame in style, using all the techniques that we knew at the time to conserve energy, passive solar techniques. We had that design completely built in, in, on paper and we were ready to go uh, to build. And then there was an economic downturn, the Great Recession. And we thought, oh, this is a terrific opportunity. Maybe, maybe we can create a case study where we had a home completely uh, designed for one way of conserving energy and see if we can minimally change it to test these new ideas in Passive House uh, that were new to us and unfamiliar to us. So it was a value engineering exercise where the value was to see if we could minimally change the specifications to save real, save, real ways to save energy um, with the metrics involved. And what appealed to NYSERDA was that we could have this apples to apples comparison because we had already completed this design uh, for what was considered state of the art um, passive solar approaches to what was unknown even to them about uh, passive house design. And uh, we, with the help of the Levy partnership, we could run the metrics about what, what really the difference it made to increase the thermal barrier performance, to um, enhance the ventilation where it could recover energy and to minimize the heating and cooling loads. This, the results were astounding uh, to us, <laughs> not, not just uh, to us, but also to uh, everybody who participated. I mean, of course, we expected to save a lot of energy, but we had no idea of how energy inefficient uh, the original design was by comparison to what we could achieve uh, with Passive House. And uh, I have to say that the this particular home, uh, its shape maybe being so almost like a sphere and compact and, and because of these particular builders, uh, we saved so much energy, it was, it was hard to believe. 99% less energy for heating, 99% less energy for heating uh, than passive solar, 86% less energy for cooling. Um, and then we got to actually build it and uh, run it for a year. And it proved to be just that. I mean, there was practically no energy used to heat and cool this house, even in our climate, even in a most severe winter. Right from the start, the Hudson Passive Project was a community build. It was the Great Depression. Uh, we had people uh, hunger, hungry for something to focus on that was uh, forward thinking. And in the Columbia County, uh, we have a lot of builders. Uh, there's a lot of carpenters up here, um, a lot of local builders. Uh, it isn't that people that home building is done by uh, large developers that come in. It's not like that here. And um, so we decided to turn it into a community event. And uh, we, we talked to the community as we went along. We held uh, 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 presentations of what passive house techniques were. Um, you know, we, we explained the uh, what we hope to achieve out of it. And um, 
we invited them to help participate in, in the creation of this new technology that was promising um, to save so much energy. And what we wanted to demonstrate very clearly is that we were using the same design that we had designed before based on all of those things that we felt that people in Columbia County wanted to achieve in a home. And in no way we were designing a home that was somehow compromised or changed um, to reduce this energy. I mean, we designed this home before we even tried to make it passive house standards. So the same architecture um, being re-engineered for this new technology and hey, look, look at the results. In that audience uh, and at these frame raisings and all these events that we, that we um, had were actually Habitat for Humanity volunteers. I mean, those builders would frequently volunteer for Habitat uh, for Humanity builds. And this is where the idea came that uh, could we take that technology and apply it to a Habitat uh, project in the same way, in the sense that we wouldn't change what they would normally build. Uh, we would look at what they normally build and just re-engineer it. Uh, so not trying to create a new architecture, but taking what they know they can afford to build and what they know that their families um, like to live in and, and can afford to live in and just, just change the specifications with the goal of making their utility bills more stable and ideally uh, lower because, you know, as we said, when those utility bills go up even slightly, they are even in a passive house that is a Habitat for Humanity house, um, even priced to be exactly what they could afford. Uh, when those utility bills go up, they're back into housing poverty. And that, that is not the goal of Habitat for Humanity. It's certainly not the goal for a sustainable rural workforce. We need to fix as well as minimize those energy bills. So because we had created this as a community build to begin with, and because there were so many Habitat for Humanity volunteers already um, uh, participating, as I said, helping with the framing and, and, and learning as they go, we asked that same coalition of, of consultants that, uh, that were pulled together to receive that NYSERDA grant, if, if we would all be willing to donate our services to take that same approach to what they build. So we understood that um, even if we donated our services, that it would cost them more money to go from you know, Energy Star 3 standards, what they would normally build to Passive House. Um, we cautioned them that about that because at the lower end, there is much more of a price increase than at the upper end. But they were not concerned because uh, A, we were donating our services, B, they already had a trained workforce, but C, their donors were more inspired to give more with the idea that the families um, would be in a better place and be more stable. I mean, everybody needs a stable rural workforce in a rural community. So it did true to be more expensive. I mean, certainly there's more cost in the framing and insulation and thermal and airtight materials, um, but it's a habitat project. So there really is no increase in labor costs because labor like our consulting services is all donated. So here is a really interesting uh, approach to helping communities get their, home, their, their families into more sustainable homes, focusing on what the community can do as community builds. And Habitat for Humanity is just one example of, of how communities can build for their families and maybe a good way, an ent good entryway for how passive house consultants can just start to help uh, lower income families in these rural areas. So as I said, we're taking the same approach where we take the same architecture and minimally change the specifications. In this case, the architecture 
reflects the architecture of what they typically build here in Columbia County for uh, rural workers' families. It's, it is homes that can work inside the villages in the area in, on small lots. This is the, to the, the type of homes that, that was just completed. It was, a, it was an Energy Star 3 home. It was just completed uh, the year that they asked us if we could uh, take on this challenge with them. And so, as you can see, we were very, very true to our mission, as true as we can imagine to be, which is everything they were used to building, mimic. The same volume, the same layout, ratio of the same windows. And, as, and we learned as we went <laughs> that we could be even closer to exactly what they were used to building as we went along, minimally modifying what they built so that it could meet pass to pass standards. We were relying on what we knew worked about reducing the energy costs so that we could convince uh, their, their, their board and their volunteers that this would be a worthwhile mission. Gave them quick examples of how we could achieve this within their uh, current uh, design. And, ex and as I said, they were somewhat familiar with the, the, they were very familiar with the technology, but actually showing them you know, how it would fit into their homes and giving them the confidence that it would be a minimal change. Of course, the key is that we were going to heat and cool this entire home, this entire passive house uh, 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 design with just one mini split, a three bedroom, two bath house. We had to do the whole thing with just one mini split because that is going to be the only way that we could make it affordable. We had to minimize the heating, ventilating, and air conditioning costs um, because uh, we were increasing the cost of other things. So uh, it worked. You know, we, we moved families into the passive house. Um, we managed to cut their heating and use by 90%, uh, cooling use significantly, not as much as we wanted to in the first time around because uh, we overglazed actually uh, during the first time around. We didn't quite understand the best way to move air around the first time around, working with just one mini split, but we definitely reduced their energy costs and we made them uh, much more stable um, energy bills. So as we go forward, we were thinking, let's just try a little bit, a, a little bit, change things a little bit more so that the homes are now even more comfortable to live in. So I want to give you an example of, a clear example of what these homes uh, are, how their homes are laid out. These are 1,250 square feet of usable space. There's a first floor, which is kind of an open floor plan. Uh, to the back is a flex space that could be converted into a, a ground floor bedroom if needed. We had the bulk of our mechanical system tucked into the first floor bathroom, uh, but the rest of it is very much an open plan. On the second floor, we have a middle space that acts as a kind of um, transition space, if you would, from first floor and second floor with an overlook uh, into the lower level and a staircase. And then to the back is uh, one bedroom a shared bathroom for the entire floor and toward the front is a master bath and another uh, smaller bedroom. So this is our standard model. This is what they were building before and we just duplicated it. One of the advantages that we had working with this Habitat for Humanity is they were already used to building twin homes, kind of mother daughter homes, two units side by side. Why that's a huge advantage for passive house is because it increases the exterior surface uh, to the interior volume area by moving two families into one structure, a bit more squarish. We managed to make it even more squarish as we went along. And that way it's still tiny houses, but not so tiny that the ratio for the exterior surface to the interior surface made it harder for us to achieve uh, the, 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 the desired heating and cooling 
loads uh, with the equipment that we had to use. I want to emphasize the shift that this help has for a family that is, uh, was renting in a mobile home beforehand. Again, it may seem affordable that you spend 1100 a month, but when you get rent and then you add it to utility bill that goes from you know, $300 some months, $200 other months, maybe $375 another month, now you're talking about $1,475 a month, which for one family, one particular family, meant that the home, uh, the, the, the woman who was the single mom had to hold down six different jobs uh, just to make, uh, make ends meet on any particular winter month. So you move that home, that family into a habitat home. Of course, they can set their prices to their family's uh, income, but then you reduce their utility bills to for nothing practically, $83 a month, and stabilize that at $83 a month. The change in their lifestyle is dramatic. That family who, who the mother had to hold six jobs suddenly could only could afford to keep her family uh, um, you know, making ends meet with just one job. And, and you can imagine that. I mean, if you get hit with an energy bill that is $200 a month more than you were expecting, I mean, that's, that's a trip to the dentist. That's a pair of, that's, that's tires. That's, that's all those other essentials that you need to keep yourself uh, working and uh, to keep yourself out of poverty. That is what I think we often forget is we think that energy is cheap, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap to our hardworking families.